What's up guys? So the most popular video that I seem to have ever done is repainting my son's football helmet. I've had a lot of requests uh, for different questions about it and it's a new season. It's time for his helmet to re be repainted again. So I'm going to grab the helmet. I've already taken it apart so I've just got the shell but I'll go over the steps that it takes to repaint the helmet and I'll post the video. Hopefully it helps you guys out there. Seems like there's a lot of young men of you out there that are um, looking to be able to repaint their helmets. So I'm glad this helped the first time and I hope it helps even more this time. Enjoy your football season guys. It doesn't last forever and every single play counts. So get your helmet done, get out there and have a great time. All right guys, so I've got the helmet here. Like I said, it's just a shell. Um, as you can see, my, my son had some stripes on the helmet and some decals and they actually peeled the old paint off. So I didn't do the best job in the whole world on painting this helmet last year. So I'm going to try and do better this year and show you guys kind of what I, not necessarily what I did wrong, but what I could do better. And first of all, you know, my prep last year probably wasn't that great. I wet sanded it, but I didn't use um, a Scotch-Brite pad or a Brillo pad which is typically what I normally would have used for a situation like this. All right guys, so you have two options. If you go to an auto paint supply store, you can get a really good Brillo pad like this. And so this is um, what they use on automotive, like when they're finished sanding it completely and everything's done, this is the last stage of prep is just to kind of sand it down with one of these and go back over it with some paint prepare spray, clean it all up and then spray the car. So. This Brillo pad works really well. You can also use one that has like a sponge on the other side that you can get, you know, at the, at the grocery store or whatever. So the Brillo pad side of this works really well. So either one of these will work. Um, you know, I, I would definitely try to recommend going to the auto supply, paint supply store and getting one of these. The other items that we're gonna need to use are the paint prepare stuff. So there's actually a can called a paint prep or a prep spray. And then there's um, paint thinner, which is what I used last year. And the paint th thinner works great, but the paint prepare stuff works better. And this is what it looks like. So there's a couple products that are gonna really come in handy. This is actually, it's called Prep All. So maybe you can see that. Maybe you can uh, order this on Amazon, I haven't checked. But this Prep All is what you wanna spray the helmet down with after you've sanded it down and clean it all off. So you're, so you're gonna wanna use like a really nice microfiber towel. If you can get some of these, they, you know, Costco, Amazon, anything like that, all you need is a nice new uh, or microfiber towel to be able to spray the paint prep on the, um, on the helmet, wipe it off with a towel, and then you're ready to spray. The most important thing is, is once you've wiped it all off and gotten all the dust off, you don't wanna be touching the helmet with your hands. Your, your fingers have you know, body oils on them and when you, when you touch the helmet and then spray the paint, you're gonna get fish eyes. So anywhere that the helmet gets touched with your fingers again before you paint, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it back down with some prep ball or like I did last year, just some paint thinner. So you can use either one. The prep ball is kind of made for it and designed for it. So this is definitely gonna work better. Um, the paint that I'm going to try to use this year, because I sell semi-trucks, I've got some Volvo white paint. And this is actual um, automotive paint. It's, um, it's an enamel. Um, and the enamels are a lot harder and stronger. So it's, it's an auto body paint. If you can get an auto body paint that's, you know, just go to the auto body supply store or paint supply store. If you're able to go there and, you know, get a get a Brillo pad and get the prep ball and tell them what color you want and if you want it in matte or gloss. And for the most part, they can pretty much mix up any color you want. If you're just going after, after a basic color, you know, like white or black, that's really simple. If you've got a school color that you need to match and you have something that's that color, you can actually take it to the auto, supply, uh, auto paint supply store and a lot of times they can match the exact color that you need. So you don't have to just go off of some basic color that you're gonna get you know, at, at the hardware store. You can actually go to the auto paint supply store, show them the color that you need, and they can usually match it very, very close. And that way, you know, you're getting the right color for your helmet. So we're just gonna go ahead and sand the helmet back down again, prep it, and then we're gonna paint it. 
Um, like I said, this is a, a it's, it's basically an acrylic enamel. It's very hard and uh, hopefully it holds up better than it did last year. I mean, you know, he played pretty hard and he's got a lot of dings and dents and bruises on the helmet. We'll just sand the helmet down. You know, we're not gonna be able to get rid of all the scratches or any of that kind of stuff, but we're gonna be able to clean it up and make it look like it's brand new again. This is a Speed Flex and it's got these little rubber grommets here. And I took them out last year and it looks like I forgot to take them out this time. So I'm gonna have to try to get them out. All right, so we got all those rubber grommets out. Now we just need to sand. And if there are some spots that you really want to get better, then you can always use an actual sandpaper. This here is a 1500 grit, which is, you know, 1500 is way, way too fine. It's, it's definitely a good finishing sandpaper if that's what we wanted to use it for. We would want something that's a little bit more uh, gritty. So this here is a 120. 120 is probably going to be too aggressive because it's just going to leave a lot of scratches in the helmet and then we're going to have to go back over with some lighter sandpaper for a long time and try to sand it down so i'm going to go ahead and see if i have anything else that's a little bit more uh less aggressive than 120 but more aggressive than these others and see what i can come up with and try to sand it down a little bit i'm going to try it up here on these on these spots of this helmet and see what that looks like I just wanted to knock off the edge on some of this paint that was peeling. So we really want to use this Brillo pad aggressively and getting all the nooks and crannies and sand everything down the best that you can. The better job we do sanding the better the paint's gonna stick and the, the less it's gonna chip off throughout the season. I would say a more ideal um, sandpaper, if you wanted to buy some sandpaper to rough it up a little bit more and then go back over it with the Brillo pad, I would say a better grit would probably be like a 300 or a 400 grit. Like I said, this is a 120, it's pretty aggressive. The nice, thing about the, the nice thing about the Brillo pad is it's kind of malleable and it'll fold and fit into the nooks and crannies of the helmet so that you can kind of get the edges good.
If it's the first time you're painting a helmet, because this is the second time this helmet's being painted, and you can see that it's chipped in a lot of places and some of the paints come off as I'm, as I'm sanding it. So it's gonna take a lot more work to get this one smoothed out better than if it was the first time I was painting it like last year. So this is gonna take some effort on the sanding part this year a lot more than it would have if it was just the first time I was painting it. Alright guys, I think that's pretty good. So now I'm just going to take this prep ball and just spray the helmet down. I'm going to take that microfiber towel that I've got I'm just going to start wiping it down. And it might take one or two of these microfiber towels to really get all that dust off. Because our goal is to get all that dust off of the helmet from sanding it down. We can even clean the inside up a little bit just to try to get some of the dust out so that when we're spraying it, the dust doesn't come back around and get on our painting surface. But we can use this pretty liberally. We want to make sure we're getting all the little nooks and crannies and getting all this dust off the helmet the best we can so that the paint will stick everywhere that we want it to. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'll go back over it one more time before I spray the helmet. Um, after I do that, I do need to wait about five to 10 minutes before I paint the helmet because this, this is kind of a, a thinning agent, so it would thin out the paint and it might not stick that great. So we wanna make sure it dries before we paint it. But I'll go ahead and set up my little painting area kind of like I did last year. That way you can, can kind of see what I did so that you know I can hold the helmet up and then I can spray all the way around it without having to touch the helmet. All right, guys, so last year all I did, I've got a little bit of a bench here. I'll show you. And I've just got a, I've got a five pound um, sledgehammer mallet and I don't care that it gets painted on, or you know, I don't care that it gets paint on it. So I'm just gonna set the helmet on top of it and spray all the way around the helmet. Now, if you're doing this in your parents' garage or something like that, make sure the cars are all pulled out. Um, you don't want to get spray, you know, over spray on cars or anything like that in the garage. You also want to make sure that the temperature is pretty warm. If it's not close to 70 degrees, then don't do it because it's too cold and the paint won't stick properly and it won't dry properly. So you want to make sure you're somewhere that's relatively 70 to 80 degrees, 85 to 90 degrees, and then you're good to go. Okay guys, so I've got my prep all, I've got my rag, and I've got my paint, and I've got my helmet. So I'm going to go ahead and prep the helmet again one more time. I just washed my hands as well, so I've got as much of the, you know, the skin oils off my hand as I possibly can. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this helmet down really good one more time. Get all that dust off of it, all the oils off of it, everything that we can. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set it here so that I can just go around it and paint the helmet. All right guys, really important. The best way to mix a can of spray paint is actually to swirl the ball bearing that's in the bottom. You can shake it as well, but one of the best ways to actually mix it is to swirl it. You wanna really get it mixed well so that the paint covers the helmet evenly. That should be good. All right, guys, you just wanna kinda of come back and forth over the helmet, get it completely coated, and you don't wanna get it too thick the first time. You wanna do what's called a tack coat, so you just wanna get a little bit of paint on there so that the rest of the paint as we go will stick. OK, 
Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to let it sit here and dry for about two minutes and then we can go back over it with another coat. Last year I wore a big mask, but this year I've got my big garage bay door open and all the air sucking the paint out. So I'm not too worried about inhaling any of the paint. But if you don't have a good ventilated area, then it's a really good idea to wear a mask. Last year I did use um, a primer base. And so I, I painted it with a primer first and then I painted the helmet. That's definitely not necessary. And I think that's actually probably part of the problem of why I'm having some of the, the had some of the paint issues chipping off and stuff. So this time I'm just gonna go straight to the paint. I'm not gonna put any primer down. Let's get her open again, let's give it a shot. We can go a little bit thicker with the paint this coat because we've already got a tack coat on there. It's gonna stick pretty well. we go. All right, guys, just put down the last coat of paint. We'll take a look at the helmet. We'll let it dry and she'll be done. So you can see some of the spots where some of the paint had peeled before, but it'll dry up really good. And this helmet will give him one more year of playtime.